Hi friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In the previous videos, we understood the basic working principle of the oscillator. And then we have also seen how to design the RC phase shift oscillator. So in this video, we will see a one more type of RC oscillator, which is known as the Wayne bridge oscillator. So this Wayne bridge oscillator is the harmonic oscillator, meaning that the output of the oscillator is the sinusoidal signal and it is used for the generation of a sine wave typically in the range of audio frequency. So if you see the circuit of the RC oscillator then it will look like this. So as you can see over here it involves the bridge circuit. Now let me just redraw the same circuit in a different way. So as you can see over here this resistor R3 and R4 are the part of this amplifier and these two branches of the bridge circuit forms the RC feedback network. So here the op-amp is used in the non-inverting configuration and the positive feedback is provided to this op-amp through this RC feedback circuit. So now if you see this RC circuit, it consists of a 2RC network. The one is the series RC network and the other one is the parallel RC network. So here this series RC circuit acts like a high pass filter while this parallel RC circuit acts like a low pass filter. So at low frequencies, this capacitor acts like a open circuit. So it does not pass the low frequency signals. On the other end, at high frequencies, this capacitor provides the very low impedance. So it easily allows the high frequency components. So in a way, it acts like a high pass filter. On the other end, if you see this parallel RC circuit, at low frequencies, this capacitor will act as an open circuit. So the output voltage at this node will directly appear across this resistor R2. And at very high frequencies, the impedance of this capacitor will be very low. So the output will get short circuited to the ground terminal. So in a way, this parallel RC network will act like a low pass filter. So this RC network does not allow a low frequencies as well as high frequencies. But at one particular frequency, the output of the circuit will be maximum and that frequency is known as the resonant frequency. So in a way, this RC feedback network will act as a notch filter. And if you see the response, then the response of this RC feedback network will look like this. So only at one particular resonant frequency, the output of the circuit will be maximum and at rest of the frequencies, the output will be minimum. So at this resonant frequency, the phase shift of the circuit will be equal to zero and the ratio of output by input will be equal to one by three. And if we consider this R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, in that case, this resonant frequency FR can be given by the expression one divided by two pi times RC. And if this condition is not true, in that case, the resonant frequency FR can be given as 1 divided by 2 pi under root R1 R2 into C1 into C2. So this is the expression of a resonant frequency in a case when R1 R2 and C1 C2 are different. And here the ratio of output by input is also known as the feedback fraction. So here we have a feedback fraction beta is equal to 1 by 3. And to get a sustained oscillations, the A beta of this oscillator should be equal to 1. So in a way we can say that the gain of this amplifier should be equal to 3. Now as we know, this op-amp is configured in a non-inverting configuration. So the gain of the op-amp will be equal to 1 plus R4 divided by R3. Or we can say that 1 plus R4 divided by R3 that is equal to 3. That means R4 divided by R3 will be equal to 2. So in this way at the resonant frequency feedback fraction of this feedback network will be equal to 1 by 3 and at that frequency if we want to get a sustained oscillations then the ratio of R4 by R3 should be equal to 2. So whenever uh, these conditions are satisfied at that time at the resonant frequency we will get the sustain oscillations. So now considering R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, 
let us design a pain bridge oscillator of frequency 10 kilohertz so here we are assuming that r1 is equal to r2 and c1 is equal to c2 and the frequency of this oscillator is equal to 10 kilohertz so under this condition the resonant frequency fr can be given by the expression 1 divided by 2 pi times rc now here let us assume that c is equal to 0 0.01 microfarad so let us find out the value of r for the given values so r will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times fc that means 1 divided by 2 pi times 10 to the power 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 or if we calculate the value of r then it will roughly come around 1.59 kilo ohm and in this design the gain of this amplifier should be equal to 2 so let us assume that r4 is equal to 20 kilo ohm and r3 is equal to 10 kilo ohm and here c1 and c2 are 0 0.01 microfarad and r1 and r2 are 1.59 kilo ohm now what we can do we can use a potentiometer of 5 kilo ohm for these two resistors and we can tune these two resistors to the value of 1.59 kilo ohm so in this way by using this expression we can select the values of r1 r2 and c1 c2 and we can design a vane bridge oscillator of a desired frequency now so far we have directly used this expression for this vane bridge oscillator so let us derive this expression for the vane bridge oscillator and let us also see at this resonant frequency fr why the feedback fraction of this rc network is equal to 1 by 3 so for the derivation let us assume that the impedance of this series rc circuit is equal to z1 and the impedance of this parallel rc circuit is equal to z2 now for this rc network the output voltage v out can be given as z2 divided by z1 plus z2 times input voltage or we can say that v out by v in is equal to z2 divided by z1 plus z2 now here z2 is equal to r2 in parallel with 1 by j omega c2 or we can say that that is equal to r2 divided by 1 plus j omega r2 times c2 similarly this z1 is equal to r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 so let us put the value of z1 and z2 in this expression so we can write v out by v in is equal to r2 divided by 1 plus j omega r2 times c2 divided by r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 plus r2 divided by 1 plus j omega c2 into r2 so if we simplify this expression then we can write this expression as v out by v in will be equal to r2 times j omega c1 divided by r1 times j omega c1 multiplied by 1 plus j omega c2 into r2 plus 1 plus j omega c2 times r2 plus j omega r2 times c1 and further if we simplify it then we can write this expression as v out by v in will be equal to j omega r2 times c1 divided by 1 minus omega square r1 r2 c1 c2 plus j omega r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 times c1 so after simplification we will get this expression now like we have discussed at the resonant frequency the phase shift that is offered by this feedback network will be equal to zero that means this term should be equal to zero so that this j omega will get cancelled out at numerator and the denominator and the overall phase shift that is provided by the circuit will be equal to zero so from this we can say that at resonant frequency this omega square r1 r2 
C1, C2 will be equal to 1. Or we can say that omega will be equal to 1 by under root R1, R2 into C1 into C2. That means F will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times under root R1, R2 into C1 into C2. Now if we consider R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, in that case this expression will get simplified to 1 divided by 2 pi times Rc. But for a moment let us assume that R1, R2 and C1, C2 are different. So now if we consider this condition then V out by V in will be equal to R2 times C1 divided by R1, C1 plus R2, C2 plus R2 times C1. Now if R1, R2 and C1, C2 are equal, in that case this V out by V in or the feedback fraction beta will become 1 by 3. But if they are different then this will be the feedback fraction for this RC network. Now like we have discussed for the sustained oscillations the A beta of this oscillator should be equal to 1 or we can say that the loop gain should be equal to 1. Now this is the value of beta for this feedback network. So we can say that A should be equal to 1 divided by beta or we can say that this gain of this amplifier should be equal to R1 C1 plus R2 C2 plus R2 C1 divided by R2 times C1. And if we simplify it then we can say that the amplifier gain A will be equal to R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1 plus 1. Now here the gain of this op amp will be equal to 1 plus R4 by R3 because it is configured in the non-inverting configuration. So we can say that A is equal to 1 plus R4 by R3 should be equal to this R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1 plus 1 or we can say that this R4 by R3 should be equal to R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1. So this is the condition which should get satisfied for the sustained oscillations. Now if we consider R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2 then we will get the condition that we have discussed earlier that is R4 by R3 should be equal to 2. So in this way we have derived the expression of the resonant frequency and we have also seen at the resonant frequency the feedback fraction beta will be equal to 1 by 3 provided R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2. And to get a sustained oscillations the ratio of R4 by R3 should be equal to 2. So I hope in this video you understood how we can design a Wayne bridge oscillator using the op amp. So if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.